Hello everyone. Hello, welcome back. I am Daniela Neperlika and I am Nicoleta Velescu and this is your English class. Today we are going to talk about the body and physical description, have got and demonstrative. Let's start with the body. Well, we all have a body and you know par body parts, uh, you've known them for a long time now. Let's see, we have a head, we have in the part of the head we have the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the teeth inside the mouth, the tongue, the lips, then we have the neck, the shoulders, the chest here, the stomach, arms and fingers, hands, hips, legs, we also have knees, feet and toes. If we are to get into details, we have the elbows here, then we have the ankles, we also have the heel, the part of the leg, this one here, we have the wrist at the hand. Let's see some other parts of the body, like the forehead, the nails, which you have at the end of your fingers, the cheeks, and that's about it. We have discussed all of these. Now, we are going to play a game in which you have to guess the body parts. The body part which helps you to speak. It's the tongue. The tongue is the body part which helps you to speak. Yes, that's right. Let's see the next one. Something, it's plural, that are at the end of your feet and you have ten of those. As I said, they're in your shoes, they're the toes. Okay, a part of the body which covers your head and can be of many colors. Well, it's the hair. Yes, it's the hair. They are in the middle of your legs. They are your knees. Well done. The neck connects the head to the body. Okay, great work. They are white and help you chew your food. I'm sure they're the teeth. Okay. It's right in the middle of your face. In the middle of my face. Well, it's the nose. Yes, it's the nose. Now, let's take a closer look at body parts and the actions that we can do with them. You nod your head when you say yes, so up from up to down and this way. Then, when you want to say no, you shake it from the left to the right. You are all ears when you're paying attention to something. You roll your eyes when you don't like something. You blow your nose when you have a cold. You need a tissue to do that. You stick your tongue when you want to be silly, like the girl in the picture. I'm not going to stick my tongue now. You shrug your shoulders when you don't know what to do. What should I do? You shake hands with someone when you meet them. Not these days, but this is the usual habit. You wave your hand when you say goodbye. You clap your hands when you're happy about something. Yay! Then you cross your fingers when you hope for something to happen. You stretch your back when you do yoga or exercise. You bend your knees when you jump the rope or ride the bike or when you run. You cross your legs when you want to sit comfortably. You move your body when you walk, run, or dance. Let's have a bit of practice. We have to match the actions with the appropriate body parts. You wave your hand. That's right. You shake your head. You stretch your back. Yes. You blow your nose. You roll your eyes. 
You bend your knees. You cross your fingers. And you stick out your tongue. You, not me. Now, the five senses. People have five senses. With the eyes, we see. That's the sense of sight. With the ears, we hear. That's the sense of hearing. With the nose, we smell. The sense of smell. With the mouth, we taste. The sense of taste. And with the hands, we touch. The sense of touch. Let's watch a short video with a song that will be very catchy for you. I see it, I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it. Five senses, I see it, I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it. Five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Five senses, seeing. It's what I do with my eyes. Close them, open them, yell surprise. Hearing. It's what I do with my ears. High sounds, low sounds, what do I hear? Smelling. It's what I do with my nose. I smell pretty flowers or stinky toes. Tasting. It's what I do with my tongue. Eat it up, drink it up, yum, yum, yum. Touching. It's what I do with my hands. Smooth like silk or rough like sand. I see it, I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it. Five senses, I see it, I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it. Five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Now this is it. It was funny, right? Let's see what we can see. We can see the sunrise, we can see the color of a car or we can see something on TV. We can hear loud music during a concert. We can hear someone shouting. We can also hear a knock on the door. We can taste mm, some bitter lemon. We can taste some delicious chocolate cake and we can taste some fresh milk. We can smell a nice lovely perfume. We can smell delicious something we cooked and it's delicious, but we can smell something nasty like the garbage too. We can touch something soft like wool, something sticky like uh, glue or uh, chocolate syrup or something, and something that's very sharp like cactus. Let's play a bit more. What sense do you need to use to do all of these actions? To say if the sky is cloudy or clear, well, we use the sight. Yes, that's it. To tell if someone is wearing perfume, yes, we use the smell. To check if the food is sour or spicy, we use the taste. To tell if the music is too loud, we use the hearing. To check if the water is warm or cold, we use the touch. To listen to the bell ring at school, we use the hearing again. To say if a crayon is pink or red, we use the sight. To tell if the garbage is stinky, we use the smell. To check if the tea is hot or cold, we use the taste. To tell if a pillow is soft or hard, we use the touch. Now, that's a bit tricky, but we'll do it. What we're going to do next is stick what we can taste with red. Let's see. We can taste, I'd say it's hot soup. Okay, we can also taste a slice of cake and an orange. 
Uh, let's see something that you can touch with blue. We can touch a dog's fur to see if it's soft. We can touch a squishy and we can touch a snowball to see if it's cold. Uh, what can you smell? We can smell a flower. You can smell fresh air when you go to the mountains. You can also smell bad cheese. Mmm, that's stinky. What can you hear? You can hear, let's see, some music. You can hear birds chirping and you can hear your alarm clock in the morning. What can you see? You can see the sky. You can see a book. You can look at a book. You can see a bus coming. Now, a bit trickier than before is with some expressions. Let's see what we can taste. Mm, we can taste the food to see if it is hot. What about touch? We can touch someone's forehead to check if they have a temperature or not. What about smell? Then the smell is for something delicious in the oven. Uh, what can you hear? You can hear someone playing the piano. And last but not least, what can you see? you can look at some pictures from your holiday. There are some things you can do to take care of your body. Like sleep for at least 8 hours a day. Eat healthy food like fruit and vegetables. Brush your teeth 3 times a day. Comb your hair. Have showers and baths. Exercise. And play. Don't forget to do these things and you will be fine. Now, when things go wrong with our body, we need the doctor's help. Let's see. The doctor asks the question, what's wrong or what's the matter? My head hurts. I've got a headache. Mm, my tooth hurts. I've got toothache. My ear hurts. I've got earache. Ouch, my back hurts, I've got backache. My stomach hurts, I've got stomachache. My neck hurts on the inside, I've got a sore throat. My neck hurts on the outside, I've got a stiff neck. I've got sore eyes, it's from watching TV too much. I've got a runny nose. I've got a cold. I think I should stay in bed. I've got a cough. <coughs> I've got a temperature or even a fever. I've got a broken arm or maybe a broken leg. Okay, this is it with the body. It's time for some grammar. I know you love it. Not. Have got. The affirmative form. I'm sure you remember it from last year. I have got two brothers and the short form I have got two brothers. You have got a sister. You've got a sister. He has got a good job. He's got a good job. She has got a house. She's got a house. It has got a bone. It's got a bone. We have got a swimming pool. We've got a swimming pool. You have got a nice car. You've got a nice car. They have got many friends. They've got many friends. Sometimes even the simplest words can be misused by both natives and non-natives. These are words that we use often in our daily speech and we don't think about them so much. So that's maybe the reason why we confuse them. Have is the form of the verb that goes with the pronouns I, you, we and they as well as with the plural nouns. And has goes with the pronouns he, she, it and with singular nouns. I have got, he, she, it has got. The third person singular uses has got. I call these three the three musketeers, the three grumpy pronouns. The negative. We add a not. I have not got short hair or I haven't got short hair. 
take a look here, the O disappears and well, we replace it actually with um, an apostrophe. You have not got a big nose, you haven't got a big nose. He has not got a bag, he hasn't got a bag. She has not got money, she hasn't got money. It has not got many pages, it hasn't got many pages. We have not got fair hair, we haven't got fair hair. You have not got homework, you haven't got homework. They have not got phones, they haven't got phones. And the interrogative, the questions. Have I got a sister? No, I haven't. Or maybe, yes, I have. Have you got glasses? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Has, she, has he got a bag? Yes, he has. Or no, he hasn't. Has she got money? Yes, she has. Or no, she hasn't. Has it got many pages? Yes, it has. Or no, it hasn't. Have we got dresses? Yes, we have. No, we haven't. Have you got tickets? Yes, we have. Or no, we haven't. Have they got phones? Yes, they have. Or no, they haven't. Some people use have got. Some people use just have. What's the difference? Well, Americans use have and British people use have got. We should pay attention to the negative and the interrogative, the questions. Because with only have, we usually say she does not have a book and with have got, she hasn't got a book. With the question, does she have a book? Has she got a book? How to use have and have got. To talk about the things we possess, I have a new mobile phone, I have got a new mobile phone. To talk about our relationships with other people, Jane has a brother, Jane has got a brother. To talk about what we look like, she has blue eyes, she has got blue eyes. Or to talk about sickness or temporary state, I have a cold, I have got a cold. We use have to talk about things we do. I have a cup of coffee at 7 o'clock in the morning. But pay attention, we don't use got in short answers. Have you got a dog? No, I haven't. Here are some expressions with have. Have breakfast, have dinner, or have lunch, to have a bath or a shower, have an accident, have a dream, have difficulty or have trouble, to have a baby, which means to give birth to a baby, to have a, a chat and have a conversation. But it's time to practice. Complete the sentences with the correct form of have got. My sisters have got long hair. I can't open the door. I haven't got a key. Have you got an apple tree in your garden? Robert has got a lot of friends at school. Ben hasn't got a lot of books. Hurry up. We haven't got much time. What have you got in your school bag? My uncle hasn't got a son or a daughter. The twin sisters in our class have got pretty eyes. Have we got a red sofa in our classroom? My hamster has got a very soft fur. She wants new jeans, but she hasn't got the money. Now it's time to learn about physical description. When we discuss physical description, we refer to the age. Let's take a look at some cartoon characters. Bart is young, Homer is middle-aged, and Abraham is old. Then, we take into consideration the height. Like the first one, he's short, the one in the middle, he's medium height, and the third one, he's tall. Then the build. Olive is thin or slim, Bluto is fat, and Johnny Bravo is muscular. When we discuss the hair, we, we talk about the length. Rapunzel has got long hair, Heidi has got short hair, and Dopey, well, Dopey is bald, he's got no hair. Then we talk about the color of the hair. Smurfette has got fair hair or blonde hair, Sasset has got red hair, Belle has got brown hair, 
and the prince has got dark hair. Then we also discuss about the shape. Morticia has got straight hair, Ariel has got wavy hair and Merida has got curly hair. Moving on to the eyes. Aladdin has got brown eyes, Hercules has got blue eyes, Powerpuff Girl has got green eyes. We can also discuss about other features. For instance, Dexter has got glasses just like me, Chucky has got freckles on his face, Yosemite Sam has got a mustache and Papa Smurf has got both a mustache and a beard. Let's take a look at these famous cartoon characters. Would you like to describe one of them? Well, I think I'll choose Obelix. He's tall, he's fat, uh, he has a big nose, red hair. I can't see the color of his eyes because they're closed. And, and that's it, I guess. It. Then his best friend, Asterix, well, he's quite the opposite. He's short, he's thin, he's got a big nose, so they're similar in that. Then uh, he's got blonde hair and a mustache. It's time to play some more. Are you ready? Let's mm -hmm. see. Let's see. Choose the right option. This is Billy Bob, the sheriff of Raytown. He's in search of some robbers. Let's help him catch them. He has got blue eyes and fair hair. He's wearing a blue shirt, a brown hat, brown trousers and grey shoes. He well, is... I think it's Blaze, the one in the middle. <gasps> oh no. Oh no, so it was him. He has got fair hair and a big moustache. He's wearing a blue shirt, a brown hat, brown trousers and brown shoes. Mm, this must be Brooks. Exactly. Oops, we got Brooks. He has got big blue eyes and red hair. He's got a big moustache. He's wearing a dark blue hat, a light blue shirt, blue jeans and red boots. Mm -hmm. This is Breaker. Exactly. He said it wasn't him, but don't believe him. They all say that. He has got blue eyes and a big moustache. He's wearing a white shirt, blue jeans and brown boots. He has a red scarf around his neck and a brown belt. Mmm, blue eyes, big moustache, white shirt, blue jeans. I guess it's Bart, isn't it? Let's see. Ooh. Yeah. He hasn't got a moustache. He's wearing a blue shirt, brown trousers and dark blue boots. He hasn't got a red scarf. That must be bone. Exactly. Huh, he'll be back, he says. He hasn't got a beard and a moustache. He has a feather on his hat. He has two guns, brown boots and a red shirt. Mm, it's Gunner for sure. Oops. He's scary. He hasn't got a, a beard, but he has a moustache. He is wearing a shirt, blue jeans and brown boots. He has got a red scarf, light brown gloves and a hat. Mm, that must be Jericho. Yes, it's Jericho. Okay, good job, Sheriff. You caught them all. With your help, of course. One of these girls is my best friend. Oh, Nicoletta. but there are so many. Well, yeah. Guess who is my best friend? Oh, Can that's do it? tricky. Yes, let me try. Ask uh, me questions. First please. of all, is she a boy or a girl? Well, she's a girl. Okay, this means we rule out the only boy in the pictures. Then, uh, has she got blonde hair? No, she hasn't. No, she hasn't. So we rule quite a lot of them out. Then what about curly hair? Has she got curly hair? No, she hasn't. No. 
Okay, then um, has she got long hair or short hair? Well, not long, not short. Well, she usually wears short hair. Okay, I think I got her. You're sitting quite next to her. She's the second one in the first one in the second row. Yes. Or the second one in the first Anna. column. This is Anna. Okay, nice to meet her. You have a very nice friend. Indeed. Demonstratives. This, that, these and those. Singular. This is an apple. It's one and it's here. That is an apple. It's one and it's there. It's far away. These are apples. They are free and they are here. Those are apples. They are free and they are there. Let's try to practice it. Let's complete the sentences with this, that, these and those. This is a computer game. Those are lorries. That is a camera. This is a kite. These are balls. Those are watches. This is a pen. That is a ruler. And these are chairs. Demonstrative pronouns identify someone or something. Look here. This is my chair. That is Peter's house. These are her books. Those are migrating birds. They are followed by a verb. Demonstrative adjectives describe a noun, so they are followed by a noun. This chair is broken. That house is expensive. These books are great. Those birds are flying south. Let's practice. Take a look at the picture and decide. These are the Christmas cards we've got from our niece. This is my brother's new guitar. Everyone works online these days. Okay. You shouldn't solve it like that. Do it this way. Can you see that car? No, it's too far away from me. Take one of those books from the pile over there. Do you remember those dancers from Spain? They were incredible. Look at these pictures. Complete the conversations with this, that, these and those. And of course, use one of these adjectives. Big, expensive, short, small. What's wrong with this tie? Are you serious? It's too expensive. These shoes are awesome. Mm, maybe, but they're too small. Those jeans look great on him. No way, they're too big. Look at Miley, she looks great. Right, but that dress is too short. Mm, well. That's all for today. Next time we will talk about places in town and prepositions. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.